So welcome back to the 2016 Probability Distributions exam, and this is question 2B. A supermarket is running a promotion where shoppers get one collectible item for every $50 they spend at the supermarket in one purchase. Using a very large amount of electronic sales data, the supermarket has produced the following graph. So they get, let's recap, and they get one, one collectible item for every $50 they spend. So if we look down here, so just pause this and, and take a bit of time to just take this graph in. So on the horizontal axis, we've got the amount spent at the supermarket and the purchase. And on the vertical axis, we've got the proportion of customers. Okay, so if we take, for example, this one here, just so that we get our heads around it. See how that comes up to 0 0.07. So that means that 7% of customers spent less than $25 in their purchase. Okay. Or another way of saying it is 7% of purchases at the shop were for less than $25. It's probably a more accurate way. It says here that you get one collectible item for every $50 that you purchase. So that means that if you purchase $25, or in fact even if you purchase $49 worth, you get nothing. So the first point, and so in fact if we put a scale underneath, number of collectible items, they get one for anything from 50 through to 100, they get two anything from 100 through to 150, etc. And for anything less than 50, they get zero collectible items. So that's kind of how it works. Use this data to complete the table below. And this shows the probability distribution for the random variable n, which is the number of collectible items gained in a purchase. I have to say I don't like the use of the word model here. Okay, so this is just the table for, of the data from the graph. So if we look up here, you can see where I drew the zero in here. That was where they get zero collectible items. That happens if you spend from zero through to 50 bucks. So anything less than 50 bucks, to be specific. And that is 7% plus 4%, so that's 11%, or 0 0.11. Okay. Moving on to one collectible item. So that's technically if you spent uh, 50, at least 50 bucks, but less than 100 bucks. And so that is going to be 8% who spent 50 to 75, plus 6% who spent 75 to 100. 6 plus 8 is 14, so 0 0.14. And you can see they've already got that there. Okay, two collectible items. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can fill it in from here. 0 0.23. And the rest are done for us. Okay, cool. So we filled that in. Now, using the model formed in question B part 1, calculate the mean number of collectible items gained by shoppers per purchase. Give any assumptions that need to be made. So when it says the mean, when it says the mean, another name for the mean is the expected value, which we sometimes call E of X. You may have seen that before. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you work it out. Um, and so what we do, there's, there's actually two ways of doing this. One way is you just take each value, in this case each N value, and you multiply it by its probability of occurring, and then add, up, add all those up. So we'd go 0 times 0 0.11, which is just going to be 0, plus 1 times 0 0.14, plus 2 times 0 0.23, etc. 3 times 0 0.16, plus 4 times 0 0.15, plus 5 times 0 0.15, plus 6 times 0 0.06, and we get 2.79. 
collectible items per purchase. So another way of thinking of that method of taking each value and multiplying it by its probability is that we're, by doing that, we're weighting each value according to its probability of happening and then adding those up. Um, the other way you can do that on a graphics calculator, which is worth knowing because sometimes it's a lot quicker, is this way here. So you can go um, stat mode, menu stat, and then into list one, put in all the n values. So zero, in this case it's zero through to six. Like so. And then into the list two, put all the probabilities, or if, if it gave us them as frequencies, we could put them as frequencies as well, it doesn't matter, because it's all proportion, they're all proportional to each other. So they've given us probabilities, so 0 0.11 for 0, 0 0.14 for 1, 0 0.23 for 2, etc. Okay, and then all you do is you've got to tell the calculator to treat list 2 as the frequencies. So the way you do that is you click F2 for calculate, go F6 for set, okay, and one variable, because we've only got one variable, and that's the number of um, uh, the number of collectible items gained, and its frequency at the moment is set as one, whereas we want to change the frequency to list, so I go F2 for list, and 2 for list 2. So I've now told it that the numbers that are in list 2 are the frequencies for each value, which is what we want. So then I go exit to take me back a screen. Then I click one there, and that gives me the output for one variable. And if you look in here, you can see x with a wee bar on it, that's the mean, 2.79, same as what we got. And if they ever ask you for the standard deviation, well, the standard deviation is the one that's third from the bottom. See, it's got x, then it's got the sigma sign, which is the sign we use for standard deviation when, we, when we're dealing with the normal distribution, and then it's got an n, and it says 1.73951142. So that would be the standard deviation of that data set. But we don't need that here. Okay, so um, given the assumptions that need to be made, well, let's have a think about what they're asking here. The mean number of collectible items gained by shoppers per purchase. So, what are we assuming? Well, where did this data come from? It's a using a very large amount of electronic sales data. So, we have to assume that it's a representative sample for all shoppers, don't we? All customers. And also, we have to assume in that as well that so here there's, there's no one that um, got more than six. So there's no one that spent more than $350 in this particular sample. But we don't know whether that's actually a, an, actual, an actual constraint. And it, it could well be that people could spend more than that. So that's two things we're assuming. So we're assuming... So we're assuming that this data is from a representative sample of all shoppers, so that the spending distribution has similar characteristics to the population of all customers using the store during this collectives, uh, collective, collectible items deal. Uh, assuming that it's not that, well, assuming that no one spends more than three hundred and fifty dollars, and therefore gets more than six collectible items back in the population of all shoppers. And there's other things we could have put too. Um, it just says give, give any assumptions. So probably giving a couple and clearly explaining them should be enough. Other things might be, what What do you reckon? What might be another thing we're assuming here? Well, we might be assuming that people's spending patterns aren't influenced by the collectible items deal. So... Um, because that might change the spending habits and maybe in, invite people to spend more. So we're assuming maybe that this sample was representative of how people behave when they know that deal is happening. Okay, let's look at the marking scheme for that. So it says here, to, you had to calculate the 2.79, mean correctly calculated, that was for achieved. And the extra thing for merit was one assumption with model given. So as long as you had one, 
it was safe to put more than one. Um, and they had uh, this assumes that no more than six collectible items are gained by shoppers. We had that. Since no information was given about the distribution of amounts above $350, because we only had our sample, right? And then also assuming that the amount customers spend does not change over the time of the promotion, or that the amount customers spend changes because of the promotion. We kind of had that last one, didn't we? Okay, and that was for merit. Making sure you clearly explain your thinking. The examiner cannot read your mind. Okay, on to question three, part, sorry, question two, B, part three. So, here it is. The supermarket is considering changing the promotion so that shoppers get one collectible item for every $25 they spend at the supermarket in one purchase. Without performing additional calculations, discuss whether this will result in a doubling of the mean number of collectible items gained by shoppers per purchase. Okay, this, take, this question takes a wee bit to get your head around. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause this video and I'd like you to really think about this. And I'll give you one hint on what I'd like you to think about. I'd like you to having read the question again, but then go back to this data here and think about what it would look like if they are getting a collectible item for every $25 instead. And maybe draw it, actually label it, on this or below this graph. Okay, so have a go. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go. So I've got a new section here number of collectible items if one every $25 spent. So if we look from zero to $25, okay, so down here, what's going to happen there? That's now going to be. 0 to 25 is going to be 0 collectible items. From $25 to $50, you're now going to get one collectible item. From $50 to $75, you're now going to get two collectible items. From $75 to $100, you're now going to get three collectible items. From $100 to $125, you're going to get four collectible items. From $125 to $150, you're going to get five collectible items, etc. So let's just pause and think about this. So let's just take, let's take the $100 mark. Okay, so what's happening at the $100 mark? It's right here. Well, before, if you, suppose you'd spent um, $99, what would you have got? Well, you would have got one collectible item. Now, you're going to get three collectible items because you're in here. So spending $99, you would have got one. Now you're going to get three. So that's more than double, isn't it? As soon as you hit that $100 mark, what happens? Well, in the old deal, if you spend 100 bucks, you would have got two collectible items. In the new deal, you're going to get four collectible items. So that is double. Okay, so just think about that for a sec. What's that saying? Well, what it means is that actually it's not always double. Sometimes it's more than double. So that means that you, the mean is going to more than double, isn't it? When you think about it, you spend one hundred and twenty-six dollars. You would have got two collectible items. Now you're getting five. So let's write that down. So the question was: without performing any additional calculations, discuss whether this will result in a doubling of the mean. And it says discuss. So we've got to fully explain our thinking here. So the answer, start with the obvious. The obvious thing is the answer is no. Actually, it will more than double. Evidence. How do we know that? Well, each $50 interval is now being split into two parts. The first part, that is the first half of each $50 interval now uh, gets double as many items as before, but the second half of each interval now gets gets twice as many items plus one.
and giving an example is always a good idea so example if you spend 50 to 75 dollars you get two items instead of one but if you spend 75 to 100 you spend you get three instead of one so therefore the mean number of items one per customer is going to more than double so that's our conclusion or to be more correct we would expect we would expect the mean amount per customer to more than double okay so from the top no actually it will more than double each $50 interval is now being split into two parts the first half of each $50 interval gets twice as many items as before but the second half of each interval now gets twice as many items plus one and then giving an example therefore we would expect the mean number of items one per customer to more than double so if we go to the marking scheme and it's down here and it says you can read that just pause the video if you want um, so that question went up to excellence um, Merit identifies the mean number of collectible items gained by shoppers under the new promotion would not double and supports this with some evidence from the distributions. Excellence, the differences under the and part, supports this with statistical reasoning that shows a full understanding. And so statistical reasoning means you're, you're backing up your words with numbers, relevant numbers from the data.